to take care of her. But Jesus didn't come along. He came with other disciples. So there were four. Peter, Andrew, John, and James. Isn't it interesting? The mother-in-law is sick. And what is the first action according to this gospel Jesus is doing? Taking care of the mother-in-law. So probably she has to cook for him. I don't know. But the gospel said that as soon as he walks into the house, grabs from her hand, and she was cured of no more fever, she was okay. Able to do the daily work. What is a daily work for a woman? Housework, isn't it? Housekeeping, that's right. Only in USA, for now, we can say that women do other things. But back at home, the women stay at the house. And according to their husband, there's not much you have to do, right? Just to clean early in the morning, prepare breakfast, lunch, dinner, clean the house, the children, and do all of this and all of that. Maria get tired by me telling her only the schedule. <laughs> so, she gets cured. Jesus and disciples sit down, everybody eats. <clears throat> and they say that the whole neighborhood brought their sick people into the front door because Jesus was there. And Jesus took care of them. And they were home. This is the beautiful part of today's gospel. At least it's for me. I hope for everyone. Early in the morning, before dawn comes, they break. And early in the morning, <coughs> Jesus went out at the set place to pray. That's something that sometimes we don't do. I know that when you have little children, you sleep less and work more. But early in the morning, <coughs> to find time to pray is really beautiful. That sometimes, including myself as a priest, we find a beautiful excuse not to do it. Oh, I am tired. I was with all these Filipinos last night. I'm tired. <laughs> you know, any excuse is good that we find not to do the right thing. You notice that? Here I go with my examples. Padre. I was ready to go to church. <clears throat> but my neighbors came over for a visit. I cannot tell them, I'm sorry, you know, I'm going to church. So I stay over and we just party. <laughs> so that's why I didn't make it to church. And I said to them, that is no valid reason. Oh, yes. Because he had to pay me a lot some money, so he had to return. <laughs> well, it takes two seconds. He did the money, go home, right? But the whole party. An excuse not to go to church. It's value excuse. I was ready to go, and I feel something in my stomach. And I decided to stay over. And I say, with all respect, you got the area? No, not really. So why didn't you come to church? Because I didn't want to bother anybody. And I said, no, people don't get bothered by your presence, so don't worry. <laughs> we find any excuse not to go to church. You know that? Any excuse, and all excuses are valid. And are justified. Anyway, so... Early in the morning, Jesus get out into the second <laughs> place and pray. When the people wake up, let's say seven in the morning, where is Jesus? The door is open. Maybe he went out. All right. They said they were looking for Jesus. And they find Jesus. And it's interesting. They said, we were concerned about you, Jesus. You know, so something happened to you. Maybe you got sick. <coughs> Remember, when Jesus was in this world, nobody knew he was God. So he can be sick according to the people. Right? Okay, so it's very important to understand that. So we were worried about you, Jesus. Maybe you were sick or something bothers you. You can no sleep or you were hungry. What, what happens to you? They were looking for Jesus. And they say that because they need Jesus. They were looking for him because they were concerned about him, but because they need him. So he just said to them, you know what? I was sent also to go to the next neighborhood, the other villages. They too need to hear my preaching. 
So let us move on to another level. And that's what happens to us many times. It is exactly what I said before Mass. See? We came with Jesus. And Jesus is in the house. And we are so comfortable with him. We are going to enjoy a little bit of party later on, a little reception, we have a good time. We get tired, we go to sleep. You wake up in the morning asking for Jesus. And Jesus is telling you, let us get out to the next village, the next town. Let us go and preach to them because that's the reason I came for. For everybody to know about God's presence. So, when we go our routine on Sunday, when there will be no more gatherings like this on Sunday, it is time for us to show to them what we have experienced with Jesus. Let us move to a new level where we can go forward and to get involved. So they can realize that I may look different, but I do too have a Jesus within me. And the only thing I can offer to you, I hope you can pick up the last few days we were preaching. And you know that that is all about. That Jesus is inviting us to go into this new direction, which is go forward and bring the good news into the world. But the news will go into the world if we bring the news to them. Otherwise, it will be darkness. You remember the experience on Sunday? Everybody had their candle. Lights out. We become the light. And it was beautiful. Because we recognize that we are the light with Jesus within us. Because his body and blood is within us. Now it's time to move to the new dimension. That we must go forward. And bring the light to them. Because the light always should shine. So, at the end, <coughs> mother-in-law gets well, Jesus gets satisfied in prayer, the disciples know what Jesus was doing, and they have to move on to a new level. And so, we are getting ready and prepared after the celebration of the Señor Santo Niño also to do the same, to go forward and bring the good news to the people around us. May God be praised. Now we are forever. Amen. Amen.